Hi, my name is Rachel Andrews. Welcome to Everyday Athlete. On this week's vlog, I thought we'd talk about the transition from summer swimming to swimming through into the autumn, winter, spring, and then right back into the summer. It's um, something that I'm, I'm definitely going to be doing myself and hopefully continuing right through in skins just like last year. It is the uh, start of September, schools have gone back so there's not much going on. There's a few people on the beach but not that many down here at West Bay. So I'm really looking forward to kind of a chirpy little swim along that lovely coastline there. Here I am, um, a little bit of wind as you can see blowing on my hair but it's fairly minimal. I've chosen this location because the wind is blowing off the land and as you can see that makes the sea super flat. The beauty of it is, is there's not that many people in the water, which is something that is really great about swimming outdoors in the, uh, in the winter. And as we go further into the colder weather, less people are interested in being near to the sea. So it becomes a little bit more solitary, but it certainly is a rewarding experience. So it's not, it's not the time to hang up your, your speedos, your zogs, and your batico and everything else. It's, uh, it's still time to get in the water and get swimming. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Well, that was really cool. Um, being September, the temperature is dropping off in the water and it was quite a bit colder than I was expecting. I quite fancy a cup of tea, as I pretty much always say on these videos. A fair amount of people still hopping about on the beach. Um, I mean, who wouldn't be? Look at this background. That stuff is amazing. I definitely recommend a swim at West Bay, if you're ever in the area. Back to the advantages of swimming in the off season. One of the advantages of being less people about is that it can make your journey time quicker. Parking can be quite a lot easier, both in terms of availability and the cost. And uh, being a bargain hunter, I love it when you don't have to pay to go swimming, in particularly paying for the parking. Um, the other thing is, uh, when, when it gets colder and generally there's a, a change in parking fees at around about the end of October through to end of March you can park closer to where you want to get in and obviously get out and so that is something that's really important as the temperature drops we would tend to swim quite a bit less in terms of time in the water remembering that as we get out of the water our core body temperature will drop uh, for the next 20 to 30 minutes so it's imperative that we can get out and get dried quickly. So that availability of cheap and close parking is something that's really, really valuable. Something I really like about, uh, about swimming in the winter, you start to be able to get in a swim rise or a, a swim at sunrise before work, um, which obviously you can do in the summer, but you have to get up that much earlier. I've enjoyed a number of uh, pre-work swim rises. Morning, um, it's 6.56 and look at that sunrise. Not quite daybreak, but it looks beautiful. That was awesome. Saw the sun come up, um, quite nippy. Air temperature is about two degrees and um, sea temperature is probably 10 or 11 degrees. With the, the shorter days, it can be more difficult actually to catch the sunset because work times, commute times, bedtimes, tea times, all that sort of stuff kind of gets in the way of the uh, of, of getting in at, at dusk but in the morning you're able to do that so it almost tips on its head in terms of the availability of the swim times. You just have to think a little bit uh, differently to how you might have done um, as you've been swimming through the summer. I mean, we're only early autumn here at the moment but it is what most people would term the off season so we're into September the water is super clear and the beauty of, uh, of the temperature dropping down is that things like seaweed dies back or in the rivers, the, the weed dies back, the jellyfish disappear and you can have a really lovely peaceful swim. And if it's like this, it's really clear in the water. These conditions are some of my favourite. When I talk about the dropping temperature, it, it isn't huge, but in the summer here in the Solent, it has been around 19 to 20 degrees Celsius in the water and that will drop down progressively through the winter um, to a point in probably February, March time where it will be at its coolest and that will be at around about six or seven degrees. But it's such a gradual progression that actually as the swimmer swimming for shortish periods of time, you feel it, but it's, it's not such a gigantic shock. You become acclimatized. So I would say swimming once a week, uh, it, it 
will gradually build up and, uh, and you'll find you're able to stay in for longer than you might have thought um, as you move into the cooler months. Um, it, it's not a competition about how long you can stay in or the distances you can do, it's still about getting out there and enjoying outdoor swimming. So for me, I will continue at the moment, but I won't be swimming such long distances and it will gradually get shorter. But when I'm swimming in these conditions, I, you know, I get the chance to get a good look up and have a look at what's going on around me. It's, uh, I, I can do a little bit more nature watching over the winter months because I'm not trying to power on through and, uh, and build up endurance or time in the water as I am when I'm building up to a distance swim. So uh, for me, it represents a time to be able to relax and enjoy my surroundings and sometimes even swim with my head up for a little bit. Now, it's not all about the sunshine when swimming in the winter, although it's got so warm while I've been filming, I need to take my jumper off. It, it's the variety of weather conditions that you get, the, the moody skies, the sunshine, the bouncing um, rain and swimming when it's snowing. Well, that's, that's just something else. The other thing is, because you're not swimming so much, uh, such a distance, or you're not necessarily expecting to be in the water for so long, you can be much more opportunistic with winter swimming. You can get out and you can have a five minute dip and be really happy with that. You might spot a kingfisher, you might just have a moment of peace where you can just chill out in the water, or you might have a pretty athletic <laughs> battle with, uh, with some waves. So how do you get on and do it? Well you just continue doing what you have been doing. So just gonna keep turning up at the, uh, at the seaside or at the, at the river and, and getting in and swimming. And it's, it's just important to watch and to feel how your body's feeling and to take account of yourself as you're in the water, thinking about how long you've been in and how you're feeling. So um, there is, uh, I've got a video on my, um, on my channel that talks about cold shock and acclimatization. There's two of those. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you will consider swimming on through from the summer through into autumn at least and then maybe softly softly into the winter. It's not all about waiting until next year for the summer to come around again before you get back outdoors. Keep on getting out there, keep on swimming. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider hitting the subscribe button up here, which is my face, and uh, clicking on the bell to follow the next set of videos that come out. Um, I'd also love to have comments from you. I'd love to know what else you'd like to see. And I'm very interested to know where you're going to be swimming over the winter. You never know, I might pop along and join you. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.